Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is on some medical abbreviations that are used within the healthcare sector and this is specifically for student nurses on clinical postings or if you're a new nurse in the field or an international nurse that has come from any other country as long as you're relocating to the UK, to the US, Canada or any other country. These are common use abbreviations that you would most likely encounter during your practice and for the sake of lengthiness i would section this topic into different parts and today is part a so for the first abbreviation we're going to be looking at nkda which is also known as no known drug allergy basically when you're trying to say that a patient has no allergies to any drugs um and mostly it could be also used to say patient has no drug allergies or no food allergies or allergies to latex or adhesive so it's like a general term that there is no no drug allergy that this patient has so another term is a slash c which is also used as discontinued or discharge so maybe you want a patient or maybe the physician wants a patient to discontinue a medication or a particular line of treatment so you could say this this slash c so always know that this could either mean discontinue or discharge then the next term is DNR, which means do not resuscitate. So basically, you could see this as DNR or DNAR, or some people would put it as DNACPR. So basically, DNAR is do not attempt resuscitation, and DNACPR is do not attempt cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Please, this is very, very vital because in this profession, there is nothing like negligence, and you could actually get yourself a lawsuit if you actually resuscitate a patient that has a DNA in front of their file. So always make sure you familiarize yourself with any kind of abbreviations that you see along the line. So the next abbreviation is TX, which means treatment. So sometimes the physician is documenting and you could just see TX and you're confused. What it means is treatment. The next is I and O, and this means intake and output. So you could say in the um, physician's notes where it says, monitor i and o it just means monitor the intake and output of the patient we have to get a full balance chart for the patient which will need, lead me to the next relation which i've just talked about which is the fbc which means a fluid balance chart the next abbreviation is ama and this just means against medical advice you could also see it in form of dama which is dama which is the chart against medical advice whereby a patient doesn't want a treatment anymore and you know the physicians have said it's not okay to discharge yet but the patient is still insisting and so they give the patient the form to sign saying he or she was discharged against medical advice so the next abbreviation is h and p which is history and physical the next abbreviation we're going to look at is hpi which means history of present illness the next abbreviation is h slash o which simply means history of. The next abbreviation is PCP, which means primary care physician. The next abbreviation is SX, which simply means symptoms. So instead of writing symptoms, the might say it is SX. Another is WNL, which means within normal limits. The next is A and O, which is simply a lat and oriented other is dx which is just diagnosis so instead of writing diagnosis we could see dx on the root the next is c slash o which just means complaint of the next is cc that's a double c and it means chief complaint that's the major complaint the patient is presenting with to the hospital the next is UOP which means urine output. The next is ROS which is review of systems. Another is EBL which simply means estimated blood loss. Probably a patient has gone through a surgery and you know you might just see like the summary um, of the surgery and you can see EBL so don't be sweet it just means estimated blood loss. The next is BGM, which means blood glucose monitoring. We mostly encounter this. In fact, in the hospitals, it's just it's called BMs. But most likely when you see BGM, just know that it's just the blood glucose monitoring that they're talking about. Then the next is AO1. And when you see AO1, it could be AO1, it could be AO2, it could be AO3. And you know, the numbers can just keep going up. What it just means is the patient needs, if it's AO1, it means the patient needs an assistance of one. 
that's an assistance of one nurse or assistance of two nurses depending on the number attached to it but when you see a one most times what they're saying is that the patient needs assistance of one another gradation that you could see and this is going to be the last one where i stop is stml and that means short-term memory loss so guys it's always good to acclimatize yourself with the various abbreviations used within the hospital setting another thing that you need to take note of is that some abbreviations can have two different meanings so always take the time to clarify from senior colleague or anyone within the trust instead of making mistakes. And do not be shy to always ask for clarifications on abbreviations. This is where I'll end. And to my next video, guys, take care. And if you want me to do more content on this, if you want to see the part two, please leave your comments for me in the comment box below or leave your questions for me in the comment box below. And if you would like to send an email, send an email to everything with not sandy at gmail.com. See you guys. Bye.